90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Welcome to another edition of From the Press Box, part of the WHPC Sports Talk family. Of course, we're on Monday through Mondays at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., but Sports Talk's on Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., and of course, an additional um, show is on Tuesdays, 10 p.m. to midnight. My name is Rob Leonard, and joining me, of course, is my brother and award-winning sports writer, Tim Leonard. Hello, brother. How you doing? Good morning, brother. How are you? I'm doing I'm okay. I'm outstanding as usual, brother. Well, yeah, I, I know this weekend's a very big weekend because, uh, you know, the Hamilton uh, movie premiered on Disney+. Plus and, uh, you know, I know uh, our sister is, is seen like two or three times already, so... She's very excited, and because our sister's excited, we're excited, too. Of so, course. Of course, Hamilton was a big Yankees fan. I don't know if you know that, brother. Uh, so. it, it, it would make him like most people, brother. Yeah, so anyway, um, so you know, we, we might have a guest. We're hoping to have a guest. We won't have promote it yet, but we might have a guest. Well, tell me, don't, don't you think you had to don't, don't do that? We might. We don't know. Uh, now, I, now, now I know, brother. That's why I'm shaking my head. Oh, okay. Okay. We, we will not be that. having a guest, brother. Oh, okay. You need now to you listen know. to me. You need to okay. pay attention to those okay, nonverbal cues. I, I was thinking of uh, maybe just doing like different voices, and we could have done that. But anyway, uh, another let's, week. Let's not do that. Another week, another uh, show, and uh, what do you think we should start off with, brother? What, what do you think? Uh, oh, I, what? whatever you'd like, brother. Whatever you'd like. I don't know. There's a. Uh, there's talks. Uh, we'll start off with the, the thing that's sort of going around. Uh, you know, we're, well, coronavirus? We're de- what? Coronavirus? Uh, that's, what, that's what's going around, brother. Yeah, basically. Um, you know, uh, but, that's, but we know that. But also, uh, it, it, it seems that things are changing a little bit. Uh, the, there's, there's talks that uh, the Washington Redskins uh, might be thinking of changing their name. Um, the Cleveland it's Indians uh, might be changing their name. Also uh, about time. You know, the Atlanta Braves. I'm not yeah, sure they that. They really but, haven't gotten on board with that yet, but uh, hopefully they will. Right. and um, But there's also the Kansas City Chiefs, and there's other Indian names going across, you know, even the, the Massapequa Our- Chiefs. You know, in our old hometown, uh, you know, we, we, we were the Berta Bisons, but uh, the, the other team in town was the Massapequa Chiefs. Now, Massapequa, of course, yeah. was named after an Indian tribe. So, um, you know, that, so... That, uh, that had inhabited that land before uh, before we got there, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure, you know, you know, years ago, Danny Snyder was asked, you know, why won't you change it? He goes, well, there's a history with this name, and... He was very adamant about not changing it, and he's still the owner of the Redskins. So, um, and, and will continue to be for many years, brother, unfortunately. Yeah, he's really destroyed the team. Um, the pinhead. In many, in many ways, he's destroyed the team. Um, but what if they were to change it? You know, the NFL's in a different position, too. You know, they, they sort of apologized, even though they paid – uh, Colin Kaepernick money uh, in a court case. At the same time, um, they did apologize also without mentioning his name. Uh, so they, they, you know, the NFL is probably in a different position than it was years ago when, you know, maybe the last time this happened. Now, if the Redskins were to change, and some, some matter of fact, some organizations won't call them the Redskins. They'll call them the professional Washington football team or they whatever. They just call them Washington. Just right, Washington, or, that's all. Now, if they were to change their name, you know, to the Reds, the Washington Reds. No. Kept the same colors. What's the difference almost? I mean, if you think well, there, about there it. Well, there, there have been some suggestions, brother. Uh, one of which I, I think is very good would be the Washington Red Tails. Now, the reason Red Tails is because – that was what the Tuskegee Airmen were known as back in the day. Now, that would be a, a doubly good name for, for, from a perspective of it, it pays tribute to the military. 
it, it pays tribute to black military because the Tuskegee Airmen, if, if for people who don't know, was an entirely black flying unit, right? That you know is is, is you know is legendary among uh, among military circles, um, and and red tails for I don't I don't know exactly why they were called red tails, but that's what they were called. That would allow the Redskins to keep the color scheme. They could put a cool plane as a logo, and and that would that would not only that would not only satisfy a lot of people, but it would also I, I think be a great way to turn around what has been probably the most racist name in sports, and to to to, to turn it into a tribute, and 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 I, I don't I don't I don't know why Daniel Snyder would reject that his whole argument. For many years, because this is not a new thing for the Redskins, but the difference right. is now that FedEx, who has paid many millions of dollars <clears throat> to sponsor, you know, for the naming rights for the Redskins Stadium, uh, they are the ones now who who have said, "Hey, we want you to change your name." And, sure. and Daniel Snyder is, you know, he's he's. I'll, I'll give him credit; he's no idiot. He he might be a jackass, but he's no idiot. And when somebody who is paying him millions of dollars to name his stadium says, we want you to look at changing the name, he finally has grown a conscience and has, you know, is now saying, oh, yeah, we, we, we should look into that. So right. that has well, been, that's though, been that's... the motivation. But that's been the motivation. I don't know if they're going to change it. I think, I think they should, and, and I, think, I think they will. If, if for no other reason, then and, – and it's, it's not the best reason, but if for no other reason, then – Snyder should be sick of hearing that he is the biggest racist in sports. You would think at some point that he would want to say, "Hey, I'm not, I'm really not a racist." But he has done nothing to to have people think it's all. He's always been talking, "Oh, it's branding," and I don't want to change the name. And we have all of this merchandise out there already. And why would I want to change the name, dude? What do you mean, why? I mean, it's, it's obvious why. It, it 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 shouldn't be it shouldn't be any kind of issue as to why and when there are when there are more than one good option to change the name too then yeah change the name don't well, be, don't be known as the guy who's, ch- who's but don't be known as the guy who's such a jerk that he refuses to do something that he refuses to change something that's blatantly racist well Tim I have to you know you mentioned the the merchandise that's that's where the money is I mean. You know, everyone buys jerseys. How much jerseys more are you going to sell? How well, much they, more are you going to sell with a new logo? Boom. Well, it's, it's, well like that's the thing. Money. That's the thing. That's the thing. You're going to make a lot more money on the name change. It's it's like why, uh, you know, leagues went to the third jersey or throwback jerseys. You know, the, you know all of a sudden the, the Jets are wearing New York Titans uh, jerseys. Or, and they look you know, some, cool. Yeah. So, or the Houston Texans are wearing the Houston Oilers, uh, you know, uh, pale blue uh, colors and stuff like that, uh, but then you, the but you can't do you can't go back with the Redskins though. So um, what you could do, I, I I like the red tails. I think that's actually at first of all it's, it fits the um, hail to the Redskins, hail to the red, red, red tails. You know, I mean, I think uh, that's part of it too. I think. Um, well, the problem uh, the problem with that song, brother, is part, one of the lines is "Braves on the warpath. path." I mean, you. you that would be a fans thing where I'm sure they would continue to, to sing this song, but the song doesn't really help. Well, bra- help Braves are, are fighters. Like Unless you can find right, some new Braves lyrics. Braves are fighters, Tim. So um, that's, you know, part of it. If you, uh, you know, it, you know we, we didn't even talk about the Atlanta Braves yet, but, you know, they're fighters. They're, they're soldiers. So you can, it, you can change it to planes on the runway. How about that? Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, but then again, if you were to change it back, you know, to, um, you know, the Reds hey, also. Brother, I'm, right, I'm writing songs here. We're, we're like uh, we're like Peters and and, and Sharp here. Well, we're you Peters know, it's, McDonald. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Lennon McCartney is always a little better. Yeah, I still remember as a kid, uh, our uncle, Uncle Dan, singing the Redskins uh, theme song. You know, of course, and, he coached uh, the Redskins after all. <laughs> yes, he, of course. You know, fifty-five, fifty-six. He was the big, big-time coach there. Yeah, um, that's what he told us. 
We, we, we believe. I, I don't want to get any phone. I don't want to get any phone calls. Well, you, you, there's no Leonard coaching the Redskins. No, it was it was something that he told us when we were when we were six and seven years old. And, and Tim, when I found out to believe that, uh, when I found out that he wasn't the coach, I was so sad. I remember going to mom. I go, Uncle Tim wasn't. They didn't mention him on. There was a special on the Redskins. That's how I saw it. Uh, and, they, wow. and they mentioned the coach in the fifties, and it wasn't Uncle Dan. I'm it was pretty sad. sure Kevin told me. Pretty sure Kevin, yeah. Kevin was the one who told me. Anyway, it went something like it went something like he told you what? <laughs> yeah, well, he said a lot of things, our uncle. But the red tails would be a good thing, and if they want to keep, you know, the the colors, that's fine. And if you want to, you know, go back in time, you can still be the reds, you know, and and just get rid of the skins part. I think. Uh, wow. I, I personally think they should have when they moved to the stadium they're currently in, which is like 15 years ago. That's when they should have changed the name. Uh, you know, new stadium, yeah, new that would have look. been a great timing. And the, and the same with the thing. Indians. And the same with the Indians when they moved into Jacobs Field. You know, they should have said, okay, we're going to, you know, move along. We're going to leave our old logo behind, and we're going to have a new name and a new logo. So, um, wow. yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw out a name too. for you, brother. I'm going to throw out a name for you before you shift over to baseball. What? The Washington, The Washington Sentinels. Yeah, I know where you got that from. No, you know? no, from the no, from no. the great football movie, The Replacements, where yeah, Shane Falco is quarterback. Yeah. Now Shane okay. Falco, I'll have you know, I'll have you know, brother, this is straight from Mitch Suplee, Firebird Center from from back in uh, back in the early nineties. Say who would say the Albany Firebirds are, brother? So you know. Yes, the Albany Firebirds of the Arena Football League. Thank you, Mitch Suplee himself, the center for that team, told me that the Shane Falco character was actually based on a Firebirds backup quarterback named Ed Rupert. Okay. So when you see that, when you watch that movie, that that guy is, is actually based on a real person, the guy who was cleaning his boats and doing all that. So based on easy Ed Rupert. I, I remember that. For a couple of years when he was in Albany. Now, I think that would be a great name. You could get Keanu Reeves involved somehow. Yeah, no, make, I, it, make it like a Keanu Reeves bobblehead doll day or something like that. I don't know. It's, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to keep. They want to keep the word red in it. And when you told me about red tails, that's perfect because then it's not really much of a change. It reminds me of when the Red Men, the St. John's Red Men, became the St. John's Red Storm. You know, they wanted right. to keep the red in it to make it seem like it's it wasn't racist. And I and you know what. You know, it's like the orange men. They, they, they have a guy who has an orange face. The red man, you know, has now a guy with a red face, but he's not, there's no Indian, you know, connections anymore. So Right, but the orange, the orange men never had an, an, an Indian connection, so I don't know why you're bringing no, that. No, no, but they, they have a guy with an orange face. You know, they the, have a big guy. orange. That's, it's not an orange face. It's a big orange. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, you know, what do you expect? You know, it's not like there's a lot of orange trees up in uh, – in in Syracuse, Tim, it's not like the. You know, I, I, I would assume there's actually none, but that's you know. It's not like the Orange Bowl is down there. Or there's nothing like that, you know. So, um, so we'll see what happens with the Redskins, the Indians. You know, the, is that, there's actually a real reason why they were called the Indians. They were the Spiders at one point. Um, they should go back to Spiders. Spiders. Well, I don't know if I want to be the Spiders. Um, why not? But ah, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't call myself the Spiders, but I mean, let's face um, it. Let, let, let's face it. Most team names are stupid, anyway. All right. I mean, you know, they're not, well, not everybody the can be the Yankees. Not everybody the Mets can be are the Yankees. Stupid. Mets isn't stupid. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. It's the Metropolitans. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you're a Metropolitan okay. person. Oh, you stop. know. You're... Now, now here you are trying to justify Metropolitans. That's how and, ridiculous and then, it is. Like, then, like, of like course, they're somehow better than Spiders. Well, then you got the Cosmopolitans, the New York Cosmos, be worth. You know, Clive Toy said in the once or whatever the movie was we saw about the Cosmos, he said, well, there was the Metropolitans, and we decided to be the Cosmopolitans. And then right, they shortened it go. to Cosmos. So, uh, but we'll see what happens with the other ones. I, I mean, the Indians, there's probably a good chance that we're going to change their name. Um, the Chiefs. Well, Terry, like Terry, said, Francona, Terry Francona, the, owner, the, uh, the manager of the Indians, said he is, he is in favor of a name change. So he put that yeah, on the record. Yeah, but he's not the owner. So. He's yeah, but he's a, he's a he's a big he's a big face for that franchise, and he's a guy that a lot of people, especially in baseball, listen to because he is known as somebody who has 
a good conscience and who is a good judge of, of, of right. And wrong. Right. Okay. Much, like, much like, much like uh, Greg Popovich and Steve Carr in the NBA. So yeah, so I agree with that. another, another, another kind of guy like that. Okay. I'm not going to deny that, but um, you know, they got the Kansas city chiefs. Now chief is a leader, you know, it's an Indian leader, but it's a leader. So do you, is that an insult or not? I don't think it is. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, involved. I don't have a, you know, I'm not involved with it, you know, personally. Same with the Braves. A Brave is someone who fights. Um, now, now, the Florida Seminoles, the Florida State Seminoles, um, actually have an agreement with the Seminole tribe. Um, and they, what kind of agreement, brother? It's it's basically an agreement that they can use the name, uh, they, but and the Seminoles uh, the tribe makes sure that all the Indian references are correct. You know that they use the right, you know, Indian uh, feathers and stuff like that. And they also, if I'm not mistaken, they have some courses at Florida State and um, for, on on Indian studies and stuff like that. So um, you know, it's it's sort of an agreement which. You know what? If they're happy with it, then that's that's fine. And if they worked it out, and that could happen too, you know, you could maybe maybe Danny Snyder pays you know a bunch of Indian tribes off to keep the name Redskins. You know, <laughs> maybe you know I don't think that'll happen, but you yeah, never know. I, 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 ho- I hope it doesn't happen. Let's put it that way. I hope not too, but um, I mean, I won't be surprised if they change the Redskins change it. But the others, I'm you know I'm not sure of as of right now. So. Um, it's interesting how things are just popping up, you know, one thing to another. It's, I think you're going to see this for the rest of the summer, just things popping up like this because it's a summer. Yeah, but they're not really popping up. I mean, this is stuff that's been out there before. Yeah, but, but it's we, – we're now, we're now finally in a place in history where more and more people are taking this seriously. And it's not just, well, you know, everybody – they're all offended about everything. And it, it's not. It's 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 it's, it's – it's people's history, and and for you know for us to look at it as well, they shouldn't be so offended. Well, I, who are we to decide that for somebody? If somebody if somebody well, says, I agree, brother, but you, you know, know that- and, and and I also I also want to point out one thing, brother, before uh, before we get off this topic, um, there there supposedly was something on Twitter about a week or so ago that said that Patrick Mahomes wasn't going to play for the Chiefs unless they changed their name, and that that was false. All right, because that 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 actually came up in a story. The Kansas City Star reported that um, that that there was no no basis and no foundation to that. It, it, it's one of those rare times when when you can use the word fake news accurately, because Patrick Mahomes never made any claims like that. He hasn't said anything. He hasn't gone on the record in either way about the Chiefs' name. Uh, so that that story was completely bogus. So, but you know, I mean, I I, I think we're going to see. Some some rebranding and some some new names here, and I, I I I as long as it happens, I'll be happy to see it. I'm not going to sit here and say it has to be done immediately because I know all of these franchises want to get. They don't want to just randomly pick a name quickly. They they do have to worry about branding and about you know, which name is going to be more popular with their fans. What what they, what do they need to do with potential color schemes, uniform designs, all stuff like that? And that stuff takes time. Now I'm not saying it should take a year, but I think we need to give them at least a couple months or so before people start to get crazy about it. As long as as long as there is some sort of an announcement made that says yes, we are planning to change the name, but we need a certain amount of time, and and it's going to proceed. But we are we are making the this taking the steps that we need to take to get this done. That's what I would well, like to say. Well, no NFL a change of name will happen this season. So, right. you know, you, they, they need a, you know, and plus, and, and, and plus the merchandise. All those Redskin stuff will be sold somewhere or be given I, out to someone. I, so, I, can, I can promise you, if the Redskins, if Daniel Snyder decided tomorrow to make the announcement, yes, we are going to change the name, I guarantee you Redskins merchandise would sell out within a week. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Sell definitely. out. He would make so much money because people would buy up all of the merchandise that's out there, and and then and then it would be all right. Well, now we're waiting for the new stuff to come out, and as soon as the new stuff came out, there would be a run on that as well. I guarantee you, as soon as the Redskins get a new name, the Chase Young jersey 
for whatever the new name of it's Red Tails, the Chase Young jersey becomes the, the best selling the best selling jersey in the NFL within two days. Yeah, no, I agree. Guaranteed. I agree. I agree. And um, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how they all mix it together because I'm sure Danny said, Well, hey, can we make some money on this? You know, you know that's, that's the way he works. That that to me should be his primary goal because they're not selling out the stadium anymore. And 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 if Snyder, this is this is a way for him to to really you know up up his revenue for the next year or so, if, if not if not even maybe a little bit longer, if he can actually put a halfway decent team on the field finally, that would obviously be the biggest way to increase revenues. But his team has been floundering for probably two decades now. I mean, when was the last time the Redskins were good? It's been a long time. Shall we call cousin Kevin and find out? No, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody knows the Redskins are bad. All right, and they have been bad for a long time. So th- that is what you know. Th- this this could be. It's it's not only a way for for them to to maybe kind of you know start a, start anew, but it's also a way to kind of get rid of the past, especially the recent. It's almost it would be like if the Knicks changed their name, right? But it's it, you know hopefully they would have a couple of decent players to to pin that around, but. You know, it, it's, it's a similar situation. It's a losing culture. And, and what better way to change a losing culture? Well, uh, the best way is to win. But another way to do it is to rebrand and, and kind of well, the, have oh, a fresh well, start. Well, hold it, brothers. I mean, now, now you brought up something that I was going to change topics. But, you know, the Islanders, when they had uh, those owners, those three, three owners to combine to take over the team, even though they technically were running it more than owning it. Yeah, Larry Remember they changed? Curly. Yeah. Remember they changed the Islanders logo to the the Gordon's Fisherman guy. Yeah, and, but they were still Islanders. Yeah, I know that, but the the, the fan reaction was so harsh. Remember, it was, that, it was literally it was there was so much anger toward it. They, the people who did it were thinking marketing and forgot about the fans, and the fans totally aban- uh, not abandoned, but got so angry with the Islanders. Um, yeah, because about, Ranger fans about, were chanting fish sticks at them. Well, but not just that, but it was just a it was a bad logo. It wasn't about what the Islanders are about, which is I think they have one of the great logos. Of, well, they, it kind of was what they're about. I mean, Long Island is a fishing kind of place. I mean, there was some relevance to it, but the, that's and that's but that's the point that I'm making with the Redskins is they need to do their due diligence and and find a logo and find a name. And, and so that they don't embarrass themselves. Like, I mean, the Islanders didn't even change their name and they managed to embarrass themselves. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was quite literally the worst logo maybe in pro sports history. And, and, and I'm including the minor leagues. And the minor leagues have had some, some egregious logos in, in their past. You know, I mean, when, when, the, when you're in the minor leagues, you try a lot of stuff. Like River Rats could have been a disaster up in Albany, but it turned out to be a smash hit. You, you, if, if you're the, if you're, are Daniel Snyder, and I don't like Daniel Snyder. I think he's a clown. But if you're Daniel Snyder, whatever this next logo is and name, you have to live with this. Right. So that's right. why I'm saying they need, and the same goes with the Cleveland Indians, and obviously the Indians will, will be changing their name as well. And and even the Braves, which if, if nothing else, they need to change their logo. Their logo is is not good. But all of these franchises need to figure out what that next step is and, and what is going to be relevant to their market, what the fans will like. And, and that's why I'm saying it's not going to happen immediately. You know, but no, no. It, like it I said, as long, as long as there are announcements to say, you know what, we're changing the name. We're, we're going to have a contest with our fans and, and we're taking submissions. And, you know, the winner gets uh, four season tickets for, for whatever season, you know, whenever this, the name comes into effect. But that's, you know, that's the movement we can see. It doesn't have to be, you know, oh, we're changing our name tomorrow and this is what it's going to be. It's, it's just a matter of tell, tell people that this is actually happening and then let, let the wheels start to turn. You know, P- brother, I know we're talking about the Indians, but, uh, you know, some people have also said that, uh, <laughs> that Notre Dame – the Fighting Irish. It, it's it's another you know, one that I really you know, wish would change. But and I, who you know, knows, they're, they're who not, though. It, it's it's an Irish school. I know, they, but it's it's still, I mean, I, I, as, as, as somebody who, who's, whose heritage is half Irish, uh, like you, my brother, uh, I, I find that name offensive. It, it, it's, it's such oh, a cliche. I, I, every, it's, Irish, I mean, every, every Irish person I know loves 
the the logo of the leprechaun with his fists up. <laughs> but it, it, it's just <laughs> and, you know, and I, the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. It's 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 you know. But it's you 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 might Irish as well school. have the you might as well have the word drunken in there somewhere. The well, drunken Fighting Irish. The Fighting Drunken Irish. I mean, that's something. different. You can be I, an Irish and not be a drunk. It, it's it's a cliche, and and, and it really. It really is offensive, and and I, don't I know think that, I know a lot that, of people. I, I I find it offensive. I don't know if everybody does. I, I know I, I know I a lot of Irish people look at it with pride. I, I have pride. never really I've never really looked at it with pride. Well, I I, 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 think, I, I think it's I, I, like I said. I think it's offensive. I'm not saying that Notre Dame should change it. You know, they that's, won't. I they know won't. they won't. But I'm saying that it, it's it, it's a questionable name. Let's put it that. Way. It's, I still remember. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story, bro. There was a, a a hockey player at RPI. I can't even remember his name right now. Uh, who who played for a high school that their nickname was the Fighting Episcopalians? See, that's even better. Which I thought was so ridiculous. I had to include it in the story that I wrote because it was that ridiculous. I'm like, dude, what's with this name? And well, he just know, laughed. He, he just laughed, and he said, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> hey, you know why not? You know, uh, I I think the Fighting Irish is okay. It was, it, you know, I don't know any Irish group that's against it. Um, Notre Dame loves it. Uh, any Irish person wants to go to Notre Dame sometime in their life, whether you actually go or not is another thing. But, right. um, but the, know, reason it's, they, it's, the reason they it's like it is because Notre Dame thing. wins. Well, the that's they true, like too. It, that's, I mean, if, if the team is successful, then then fans will like it. That, that's, that's true. That, that, winning, winning helps everything. That's so true. And that, I wonder if, they, the, if the Redskins were actually winning, would they be have the same pressure on them, <laughs> you know? Uh, Probably yes, because not everybody is a Redskins fan. So, well, a lot uh, of people hate the Redskins. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, I, I did. I did see uh, on on Twitter there were there was a lot of a lot of uh, good suggestions on Twitter uh, as far as what what they should change the name to, and, and uh, of course, uh, Cowboys fans got involved, brother. As you, as you would expect. Uh, well, you one, know, the one, Cowboys fans uh, love the Redskins about as much as the Giants fans. Yeah, one one suggestion was to change the name to the Washington Lose to the Cowboys. <laughs> so I thought I thought that was kind of amusing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the uh, the Redskins would love that one. Yeah, that yeah. would be. I, I don't even know what the logo would be. Then, then again, you know, you could have uh, uh, the Cowboys losing to a lot of teams. Uh, they haven't been the way they should have been. Well, the, Redskins. the last couple, of, yeah. The Red, oh, no, I'm talking about the Cowboys. They haven't. Yeah, really the Cowboys been, have been. The Cowboys have been better than the Redskins. That's for sure. The, the only reason they they were really good was because the Giants have been so bad the last few years. Well, that too. So they've been better than the Giants as well. Yeah. Well, that they, doesn't. They've been they've been helped by the fact that the NFC East is is a pretty lousy division aside from the Eagles from a couple of years ago. Even the Eagles last year weren't very good either. So. No, the last year the NFC East was. What the worst division? It was garbage. Of it was garbage, was brother. It? You don't need to search for a bunch of words. It was garbage. Hot okay. garbage. <laughs> okay, brother. Let's talk about uh, the. Uh, it's not spring training. It's summer training. And spring training two point oh. And and what we have now, brother, is actually um, something we've. Not, I don't think we ever seen uh, spring training, except for maybe a game or two at the end of spring training up in New York, but we're, we're, we're seeing summer training in New York at Yankee Stadium and at uh, City Field. First time ever. And this, this would have been great if it wasn't for COVID-19. Imagine going to, instead of going down to Florida, you just go to City Field or Yankee Stadium, depending on who you like, and you just watch in this giant stadium, um, you know, your team practice. You know, yeah, and, it'd be fun. And, it would been a, f- a fantastic thing. and um, you, you, I, know, I, you, you know what wouldn't be fun about it, brother? No. It would be February and it would be 25 degrees. Out. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You know, you know, that, that, that's, that's why you problem. can do this in the summer because it's 90 degrees out and it's, you, know, it's, 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 you don't have to worry about weather unless, of course, it's raining. But you don't have to worry about you know, being, being too cold. You have to worry about maybe being too hot, but that's yep. baseball. But, yeah, that's why we can't do that in, in, in actual spring training. That's why they go to Florida. Because it's it's warm down there, and the same goes for Arizona and wherever else. So, yeah, you're right. But it's you know, not, I mean, it would have been nice if we, you know, as fans could get into the stadium. I understand why they're not uh, COVID nineteen and yeah, you know, lack lack of testing and everything else. Um, anyway, what's happening with Tanaka, brother? Hitting the head, line drive. You know, you know what that reminded me yesterday. 
reminded me when we were a kid and, and John Matlack got hit in that game um, in 70. When, what year was that? I forgot what year he got. But I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> John Matlack, he was hit. You remember all this. You're, yeah, I was probably eight when this happened. I, you know, I don't know how you remember thing. all this stuff. That was a major pitcher. thing. A pitcher got hit in the head. It happens. It happens. It's, it's, it's you know, uh, Tanaka was, and, and actually, I mean, I was, I was watching this as it happened because, like you were saying, brother, it's nice, it's nice to be in the stadium and, and watching a little baseball and watching the players go through the paces. And, you know, Tanaka was pitching a simulated game against his Yankee teammates. And, of course, who does he, who does he throw some pitches to? Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, who was probably one of the, uh, last people you want hitting a baseball back at you if you're a pitcher. Um, Stanton, I don't, I don't know how many people saw the pictures uh, from, I think it was Friday, uh, where Stanton, I'll tell you what, he's, 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 got the, he's got the arms. The gun show was out on Friday with the, with the sleeveless shirt that he was wearing. You know, right. I'd, like to see, I'd like to see him maybe do a little yoga, a little Pilates, and, and maybe work on his legs a little bit because – you know, he, he looks like he looks like his arms look like Schwarzenegger and his legs look like Pee Wee Herman. Um, but he Stanton was the guy that apparently the, this is going to going according to friend of the show, Jack Curry, uh, who said that Tanaka was kind of leaving his fastball up and work. And then he, then he tried to throw a breaking pitch to uh, to Stanton and it barely broke. So basically it was a batting practice fastball and Stanton mashed it. Uh, exit velocity was 112 miles an hour and it hit Tanaka square in the right side of the head, like top of the head, right side. And Tanaka, he could, he barely reacted. He, he, he tried to duck and the ball was, was hit so hard that it, 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 it smashed into his head. Tanaka was down, uh, for several minutes on the mound, uh, obviously in pain, uh, and, and here was the weird thing, because normally when something like that happens, teammates right. rush to the mound. And in COVID-19 times, you know, I mean, everybody obviously was concerned, but nobody was rushing to the mound because they're not supposed to. And I guess, I guess in some well, ways also, it was encouraging. You know, Tim, the way he got hit, though, is also the way he went down. It wasn't like he was, he, he went down slow. It was kind of like. Not really. <laughs> he, well, he got hit, but it wasn't like he just went down like, you know, boom. It was, I, I thought it was a little slower the way he went down because then the reaction was, oh, my God, he actually got hit in the head. I thought yeah. maybe you – know, I don't think they knew he got hit in the head right away. No, they did. They did. I mean, because well, of the way the ball caromed. I mean, it's, 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 it, it, the ball doesn't carom like that unless it hits you in the head because it, the skull is so hard that that's that's the only part of the body where the ball is going to hit like that unless unless you get hit in the leg like on a leg bone or something but you know this this was pretty obvious what happened and the players waited until the trainers got to Tanaka and that, that was that was actually encouraging on some levels because it, it shows that maybe the the protocols for the COVID-19 stuff is, is actually getting through the players but the trainers were the ones that, that had to help him the the encouraging thing for me with Tanaka was, you know, he was able to sit up fairly quickly. Uh, they they did a lot of a lot of concussion tests on the field while he right. was sitting on the mound. They got him they got him up on his feet and and, and you know two trainers helped him off the field. Uh, so so all of that was was pretty good. Um, Tanaka was was later uh, taken to New York Presbyterian Hospital uh, where you know he had a CAT scan there and that pretty much cleared him. He went, you know, went to, through the concussion protocol, but you know, everything seemed to be good. He was, he was back at the stadium on Sunday. So the next day he's back at the stadium. Brett Gardner said he was pulling pranks. So it, it seems like he's okay. I, I think the Yankees will probably hold him out for at least a week because you, you know, he's going to probably have some headaches off of that. And, and you know, he's, he's got to have, you, you might not be able to see it because of his hair, but you know, he's going to have a pretty big bruise on his head. Sure. So, sure. From, from from all of that, I think they're going to give him a week or so and just say, you know, Masa, take it easy. Uh, you know, maybe maybe get a little running in or get a, get a you know, maybe maybe some some bullpen. But you know, no simulated games. You know, no no hard workouts or anything. I, I you know I don't know what what specifically specifically they'll have him do. But you know, pro- unless 
it, it's probably going to be a week because of concussion protocol, and then after that they'll ramp him up again. But obviously it's a setback because we only have three weeks to get ready for the season. Right, this, and there's no exhibition games, right? There's no. I don't, I don't think so, mate. I, I haven't, mean, I haven't I heard know, anything. I know. I know the Yankees are having uh, an intra squad game. I think. I think. Um, I don't. Know, I think it's one. I think. Well, intra squad game is different. Yeah, that's a different thing, brother. It's, it, it, I mean, it's yeah, it's competitive. It's competition because nobody wants to lose. But at the same time, it, it's you know livelihoods aren't aren't on the line. So everybody knows it's about preparation and, and getting ready. But it's not, you know, you're not facing Max Scherzer, right? And so, and um, and also the how many players in camp for is a regular like spring? Yeah, I'm not even sure. It's probably about it's probably about sixty. I mean, there's a lot of players because uh, they're they're putting together they're putting together. There's going to be a thirty man roster to start the season, but there's also going to be a thirty man roster of of players working out. I'm not sure where, but I, I'm assuming for the Yankees it'll be in Scranton. Uh, but there will be like this, some of the top prospects, maybe even not the ones necessarily majorly. Well, ready, why not? But the ones that they still want to work out. Uh, I may, it might be there. I don't even know. I mean, I, I haven't heard where it's going to be. I mean, Staten Island would make sense, but I would assume the facilities in, in Scranton would be nicer because it's a triple a level stadium. And there are certain, certain, uh, you know, levels that the stadiums need, need to, uh, fulfill to be a triple a stadium which are a lot higher than the New York Penn League would be. Yeah, so, but at least I don't know. you wouldn't I, have to travel. To yeah, but Scranton's only, and... Scranton's only about 80 or 90 miles away. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. you wouldn't have to, you know, when you're talking about travel. But you, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about from Staten Island, the Yankee Stadium is, is probably, what, 45 minutes or so on a good day. Scranton, the Yankee Stadium is probably an hour and a half. Okay. Two hours at the most. So, you know, I mean, and, and – I don't know. I mean, it, it's it, it makes sense, but I would have to I would have to look into it. I don't know. I mean, that's the simple answer is I don't know. You're listening to ninety point three WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. You're listening to From the Press Box here every Monday nine a.m. to ten a.m. The show becomes a podcast later on on Spreaker dot com among other places, but usually where you can find uh, uh, your your normal podcasts, uh, you can find us. But it's, we start off at Spreaker first, so Spreaker, Spreaker.com. And if you want to hear other shows, uh, our history is in there. Uh, our show with Pat Calabria uh, from, a, I guess, a month and a half ago when we talked about the Islanders' first uh, Stanley Cup uh, victory uh, is, is there. We had a lot of great feedback on that one, um, more than normal. So, uh, But it's in there, too, among other things. Uh, by the way, brother, it was uh, Marty Perez of the Atlanta Braves on May 8th, 1973, that struck John Madlack in the head. It supposedly, it supposedly hit his head so hard that the ball rebounded into the dugout. Yeah, and that's what happens when a ball hits. When, when a ball is, is, is hit that hard by a player and it hits somebody in the head, there is a big carom. The head is a hard, it's a hard piece of the body, brother. And and there's yeah. not a whole lot of you know not a whole lot of skin and flesh there to protect it. It's just skin. That's it. So yeah, right. When it, when right. you get hit in the head, I mean that's what happened with Tanaka. The ball, the ball, you know, the the ball, the ball caromed, and everybody knew when, when as soon as he as soon as he was hit that that this is bad. But you know, apparent, apparently, uh, apparently Tanaka is uh, you know I I don't necessarily want to use the phrase dodge the bullet, but you know he he. He certainly could have been hurt a lot worse than he was. Right, and right. It, it, it was fairly fortunate that uh, you know that he's not looking at, at a, a longer hospital stay or uh, you know being being out of action for for a couple of weeks, if not more. And what about our bets, Tim? You know, you know what's well, let me just throw a couple. Let me throw a couple couple more Yankee things at you, bro. Because the oh, Mets okay. is really not a lot going on. Um, but a couple more Yankee things. Um, just uh, two players were, were missing from spring training 2.0, but both of them arrived on Sunday. That would be Gary Sanchez and Araldis Chapman. Uh, you might have seen Chapman's newest new uh, new ride on social media, brother. He 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 bought he bought a Jeep that has six wheels. I don't, the thing looks like something the cops would be driving. Uh, it, it looks like a military vehicle. I, I don't know what the need was, but apparently it cost him about one hundred sixty thousand dollars. So, uh, well, that's a lot of money for a little car. Yeah, I know it's a lot of money, brother. It's it's ridiculous. Apparently, apparently the uh, the the body of of this vehicle 
is armor plated. So I don't know unless unless the windows are are, are made out of uh, some sort of bulletproof material. I don't I don't know what good uh, armor plating the body does, but hey, I don't have people shooting at me, so I don't know why. Um, I'll also, uh, as far as the Yankees go, DJ LeMahieu, uh, who probably was the MVP of last season for the Yankees, uh, and pitcher Luis Sessa have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and are self-isolating at home. Uh, it is currently unknown uh, whether, or not whether, but when either player will be able to rejoin the team. Um, and, and one thing I wanted to point out, brother, that I saw yesterday that I loved, loved seeing was Garrett Cole sitting in the front row at Yankee Stadium. And, and we all know he can afford those seats. But Garrett Cole sitting in the front row while James Paxton was pitching his simulated game on Sunday. Now, the reason I love that, brother, is because, yes, Garrett Cole signed a $324 million contract over nine years in the offseason. But just because he's making that kind of money, it doesn't make somebody a leader. Now, this was Garrett Cole, even though he's the new guy, this was Garrett Cole being the leader of the Yankee pitching staff. And I loved seeing that because that is something that you know for a fact CC Sabathia would have been doing if we were in this situation. CC would be in, uh, sitting in that front row. He'd probably want to order some nachos and, 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 and a big gulp or whatever, but CC would be out there. Well, now CC's not here anymore because he retired. So Garrett Cole is taking that leadership void as he should because he's going to be the guy the Yankees rely on, but he also needs to be the leader of that staff. So I loved seeing that on Sunday while I was watching Yankee Spring Training 2.0. I wonder if the now, Yankees – well, let me just bring this – just a little fact. Ahead, brother. The Yankees have always, um, during spring training, uh, usually had a week or two where – you know the Yankee greats would show up. They, you know, they give them a little a coaching contract for two weeks, and you know they basically they talk to the press. And I wonder if they're going to do that. You know, in the shortened spring training. You know, it's that's something highly unlikely, brother. Well, you and know, the reason but, I say, let's face it. Let's face it. Reggie Jackson, he's old now. Reggie, Reggie's he's he's at risk for COVID. He's in his seventies now. You don't want Reggie coming to Yankee Stadium, and well, and ca- and possibly catching the COVID. And, and maybe dying, you know, because he wanted to be a coach for, for – that he didn't need to be there. Well, so you know, he, he's not really going to be a coach. The answer is no. He, he, he'll talk about a player or something, but, you know, he's basically there to talk to the media. You know that. Yeah, you but know, Reggie's, because, not, Reggie, Reggie's not a socially distant kind of guy, brother. I mean, you know, you Reggie, know Reggie's, Goose Gossage you know, or something. Reggie, or, you know, you know, the Yankees aren't going to bring Goose around. He, he's, he's had a little too much to say uh, over the years. So don't expect Goose to show up. But I, like I, 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 don't, I don't see any of that happening like, because, you know, I mean, right now, and, and you know, I, we, we're going to try and get Christy Acker from the Daily News on maybe next week. But apparently, like, reporters are doing Zoom calls for interviews. So that's, that's how these things are being done now. Um, you know, if, if you watch the Yes Network, you'll see players doing interviews. And the one thing that I've noticed, I'm pretty sure that reporters aren't in the room because their questions are coming at different volumes. And if it was, if, if, if they were all in, this, in the same, you know, all in the same room, the volume of, of the questions would be about the same. But it sounds like the connection, like who has a better connection is, is louder when they're asking the question and who's, who maybe has a dodgy connection. They, their question doesn't sound as, as you know, like, like they're sitting eight or 10 feet away from the, from the, from the person they're asking the question to. So I think that's, Part of the problem is, or part of the issue, is uh, you know that that proximity. Well, it makes sense. I mean, you know, yeah. it's a, but at the same time, um, maybe they can do Zoom calls with Reggie. <laughs> you, know? you know, set Reggie. I don't, up. I don't, first of all, I don't think Reggie knows how to, how to even knows how to use Zoom. Secondly, hey, I, I think with with Reggie, you know, Reggie Reggie likes to bask in the adulation. Reggie likes to see the spotlight on him. And if he's sitting in a room looking at a screen, that's not enough adulation for him. Well, uh, Reggie, Reggie no. likes Reggie. We know that. So, exactly, you know. exactly. So, so um, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I. That's that's why I think I think I think part of the MLB protocol for for this whole spring training 2.0 thing is to keep you know to limit the number of players who are there or the number of people who are there to to as few as possible. 
And anybody who doesn't absolutely need to be there is not going to be there. And, and you know, I mean, I, I, and, that's, and that's a smart policy. We're, we're already seeing players test positive. I mean, you know, Freddie Freeman uh, from the Atlanta Braves has tested positive for COVID-19, and, and he's going to be out for, you know, probably a decent amount of time. Um, his, his wife was quoted, uh, I think it was on ESPN.com, uh, as saying that the virus uh, hit him, quote, like a ton of bricks. Uh, and and I, can, uh, I can vouch for that because I know that feeling because I had the COVID. And yeah, yeah, it hits you like a ton of bricks. You know, I mean, I, I, I think these people who are asymptomatic are uh, really lucky as hell. But, if, you know, chances are if you get it, it it's, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. Because, and, and he's not going to be back on the field for probably, if I had a guess, I'm guessing 10 days. And, and it probably is going to even be a little bit longer than that. Uh, and that, that gives him a week and, and in a weakened condition to get ready for the season. And, and, and I, don't, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I mean, F- Freeman could wind up missing the first week of the season just trying to get himself back into shape. So, you know. Right, we'll, at least he'll get paid, see. though. You know, he'll get paid. So. Well, you know, but, you know, so what? <laughs> hey, some people need the money, brother, you know. Freddie doesn't need the money, bro. Really. Yeah. We <laughs> all need the money. Don't worry about Freddie. We all, we all don't need don't the money. Don't worry about Freddie. Yeah, we all need the money, brother. <laughs> well, you know them. well, speaking of players who, who, who have decided they don't need the money, uh, Dodgers pitcher David Price has he has become the biggest name to opt out of the season. Uh, right, he made, he, made, he made that call. I believe it was on Saturday uh, to say. I mean, and he he hasn't even pitched a game for the Dodgers. I mean, this is a guy who they got in a trade with the Red Sox in the off season. That was the trade that sent also sent Mookie Betts to the Dodgers. Uh, but David Price has, has said, you know what, I, I'm I'm I don't want to do this. I, I have I have concerns about. Uh, the health of, 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 of myself and my family, and, and I, I don't want to participate in this. So David Price has said that he is not going, uh, not going to play this season. Uh, he joins uh, Nationals first baseman Ryan Zimmerman, Nationals pitcher Joe Ross, Rockies outfielder Ian Desmond, and Diamondbacks pitcher Mike Leak uh, as a handful of players who have chosen not to play because of, of coronavirus concerns. Uh, I'm also well, expecting more players to join that list. Uh, and, and well, I am too, brother. But my, my question is, and I just thought a bit moments ago. Sure. Okay, they set out this season, their choice. Yes. Let's say next season they get they can release them. They haven't played in a year. No, nobody's doing. But that. but why not? Or let's say you just wanted to dump a contract. You know, you want to dump Dave Price's contract. Well, David get, Price he, would still have to get paid. So, I mean, they, they could they could release him if they wanted to, but you, you, they would see, still owe him sixty million dollars. See, I'm not. That's a very weird contract thing. If I, I mean, that's very strange because you would think that if you took it off for the year on your choice, you know, let's say instead of COVID, you decide to, you know, you want to go to the 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 heights of the Himalayas or something. You had to go find yourself. Why? Why would the contract still be good? Why wouldn't it get the whole thing get voided? Well, that's, that's part the, of the part of the agreement that that the players and, and the owners worked out is, is that if if players don't want to participate, then that's fine. They don't get paid. You know, David Price. It's not like David Price is stay, staying home and and collecting you know whatever the prorated version of thirty million dollars is. He's not going to be paid. Right. So he's 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 he is taking a year off. He is forfeiting his entire salary for 2020, which he will, he only would have been getting whatever the prorated version. I mean, I'm not saying only, but, you know, I mean, he probably would have been making about, what, $12 million or so, which still is great salary. And especially as bad as he's pitched for the last several years, uh, it would it would still be far, far more than he's worth. But it's 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 something that that players and ownership worked out. In, in their in their endless bargaining, and that that was one of the things that they agreed on is is you know I mean it, it, no no players are going to be sued for breach of contract if the reason that they're not playing is because they're they have health issues or if, if they themselves have health issues if they have family members who have have health issues and they don't want to bring coronavirus home and and potentially you know infect somebody in their family you know I mean Mike Trout the Arguably the biggest name in baseball. He he still is not 100% committed to playing this season. 
because his wife, he and his wife are, are, are about to have their first child. His wife, I don't, I don't, she's like seven months pregnant, if not eight. I mean, she's, she's, she doesn't have long to go before she gives birth. And Mike Trout is like, what am I supposed to do? You know, like, I'm not going to be able to see my kid because we got to, we got to stay in, in, in as much of a bubble as, as they can create with Major League Baseball. But I'm concerned about catching this thing from, from being on the road or, or catching it from a teammate and then bringing it back to my, to my, my wife and my, and my you know, brand new baby. Yeah. So he, he, Buster Posey's another big name who he's, he's at spring training 2.0 with the Giants. And he, he has said on the record to, to reporters – Hey, I don't know if I'm going to play. I'm here now, but I don't know if I'm going to keep playing. I think he's waiting to see like how many players are going to test positive and and does baseball really have a handle on what they're doing in terms of testing and in terms of, of player safety because Sean Doolittle said something the other day, the the Nationals relief pitcher about that a lot of this stuff with the protocols, the testing and everything seems kind of haphazard because the results aren't coming back fast enough which the, the, the testing facilities in Major League Baseball guaranteed would be the case. And it, it's it, not all of it is, is uniform. That it's, like I said, it's kind of random and haphazard, and, and it doesn't really seem like there's a big plan for all of the teams and all of the players as opposed to it just like being run, run differently by each team. Well, so he, I, there, there, there's the wishing and hoping thought yeah, and that's, process. Yeah, and that's a this. problem. And that's, wishing and hoping is, is, is what has gotten our country – into the 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 pandemic state that we are in right now uh, so many other countries are flat have flattened the curve or it's going down and, and the united states is one of the few countries where covid-19 is the cases are still going up because we're Except, wishing and hoping as opposed to and, actually doing something and we did something here in new york and we we have the lowest rate now exactly so, so that's part of it too you know we we sat down and said okay we're going to wait this out and we did and now everyone laughed at us when it happened oh you guys in new york oh we're not going to get it here because we have open land out here in the west right well guess yeah. what but, you're, guess you're what? all exactly you're all doing it okay brother the nhl we, you know, we we're running out of times here um it's interesting brother that the nhl has chosen toronto and edmonton as their hub cities uh both canadian cities smart um uh, and I want to know, and I just thought of this, if you're an American player, are you getting paid in dollars? Or if you're being yes. – well, not an American player, American yes. team player. Will the team pay you? Because if you're working in a, another country, there might be taxes or something on a consistent basis. If you, not, if, you, if you play for an American team, you get paid in American dollars. bro. Where do you get these questions? No, no, it's it's – Remember, remember when the Canadian dollar was uh, really bad, and the players yes, wanted to trade, and they wanted to get trade to uh, Canada because the dollars wouldn't increase, but the value of the Canadian dollar was so little at the time; it was like thirty-three percent less than the American dollar. So I'm just, I'm just thinking about that because yes, I remember. I got, a nice, pair, I, got, in, I got a nice pair of Bally shoes in Montreal way back when because the the Canadian dollar at that point was worth about half of an American dollar. Right. So I got a real nice, real nice pair of shoes for about fifty bucks. It was great. Yeah. So I'm just saying, but if they're if that's their base, you know, well, I, I'm sure it's been taken care of. But it's just something I just thought of. Um, I'm surprised they did not pick um, a closer American hub: Boston, New York, um, no. Philadelphia. You know, some place well, where part, they get, part of the reason why the fans. NHL. Part of the reason why the NHL has 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 elected to to go with two Canadian cities is because it is cheaper to stage the games in Canada. So that that part of it is financial. And let's face it, the NHL is losing money this year. I mean, there's no there's no two ways around that. Um, you know, Vegas was was thought to be one of the the potential hubs in the United States, but. You know, Nevada is another one of the, one of the states that that is you know having issues with coronavirus, and especially sure. Vegas. Let's face it, Vegas is basically you know even even without if, if coronavirus didn't exist, Vegas is basically a petri dish anyway. So, you know, it, it's it's certainly you know with 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 
with COVID-19 hanging around, it, it, it probably would not be a smart move to, to put NHL players in, in Las Vegas. So, you know, Edmonton and, and – Also, it'd be, uh, it would be kind of tempting. You know, they're trying to keep everyone in a bubble. You know, well, right. That's, that's it's, part it's of the problem. <laughs> you know, it's Sin City, you know. Exactly. And, and that's – you know, we talked about it last week with, with the, uh, the Orlando pride of the NWSL – a handful of their players decided, oh, we'll go out. What's the worst that could happen? Because the bars are still open in Florida. So they all went out, and then all of a sudden, 10, 10 members of, of the Orlando Pride had coronavirus. So that's, you know, that's what you're dealing with. You have, to, you have to have a team full of responsible people, and that's not always the case. Um, you know, the, the St. Louis Blues, apparently – uh, Friday on Friday they said that multiple members of the St. Louis Blues have tested positive for coronavirus. So you know, and, and we don't we don't necessarily what know what that means, um, but multiple, you know that that means that means you're talking at least th- at least three. So yeah. but yeah. nobody's nobody's saying who who was who it was or how many it was. It's just multiple. So uh, this is this is stuff. A lot of a lot of teams are. Uh, very hesitant to to name names or or to say what's going on because of of potential HIPAA violations. You know, I know with the Yankees, uh, with LeMahieu and Sessa, uh, Aaron Boone mentioned that both players had had given him the okay to to mention their names and and to let let the reporters know what was going on. So so that was that was a cool thing. But you know, that's that's one of the things that the teams are concerned about in in terms of of actually saying. Hey, this is what's going on. So no, no, that makes yeah. sense. And you know, I, I assume the players, if they have COVID nineteen, will get paid, even though they're not yeah. practicing or playing. Let's say yeah, that happens it, during it, the season. It's just like being on a disabled list, you know. But you know, except that it's it's obviously an issue. So you know, they they're you know they don't know how long they're going to be out, and they have to have they have to have two negative tests before they can come back. So two two negative tests uh, two days in a row, I think, is what uh, what the protocol was. Yeah, well, so we'll see where that goes. It's amazing. It's amazing how the, the, it's, it's like I said. I think it's a wish and hoping for every sport right now, uh, maybe except for like electronic sports. <laughs> you know, even you esports. Know, esports, which is actually a up and coming thing, brother. They had esports well, auto racing during the pandemic one there while everybody was quarantined. Yeah, I mean, so that was kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, you because know, they I got guess. real. They got real. They got real drivers involved. They did, huh? Yeah, like Mario Andretti was involved. I mean, that guy's like he's got to be like seventy or eighty by now. What, what was the game when we used to go to Time Out in the the mall? What was uh, the name of that remember. game? The driving game. I don't. Remember. We used to Grand, play it. Grand Prix Auto or something. No, it wasn't it. Grand Prix Auto. It was it was, it was a bad thing. I'd love to get that game. Yeah. Anyway, brother, we're just about out of here. Uh, another another show has passed us by. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. We're here every Monday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. talking sports. I will see you Friday with uh, Beatles songs. I'll see you on Sunday with the free-for-all, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And we'll be back in 167 hours with more uh, from the Press Box. My name is Rob Leonard. Joining me, of course, is my brother, an award-winning sports writer. Give your name, brother. Tim Leonard. <laughs> Tim doesn't like – Tim wants me to just say his name. And I don't yeah, I, I don't know why you keep doing this. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, stay tuned to Big Ed with the Good Gold Show right here on WHPC, Garden City, New York.